Welcome to this Autodesk Factory Design Suite tech tip for using a point cloud as a factory asset. My name's Rusty Belcher. The prevalence of reality capture and point cloud technology is much more common in today's manufacturing environment. Point clouds and scanned meshes are becoming a regularly used design tool for modeling applications and 3D printers. In many cases, you can produce a fairly good quality point cloud with pictures from your camera phone. In this tech tip, we'll be outlining the process for generating a point cloud using photos and the new Recap Photo service. The point cloud we generate will then be used as an asset in the Autodesk Factory Design Suite. The first question I think many designers would have is why would I want to use a point cloud instead of a solid model? Well, there are several reasons to utilize a point cloud in place of a solid model. In many cases, point clouds can be generated from scanners or cameras in much less time than that required to produce a standard solid model using conventional 3D practices. In many design workflows, the final form of the machine is not known, so solid models must be created as digital prototypes or digital representations. But in many cases, the machine is already built and sitting on the factory floor. In this case, it's much easier and efficient to utilize reality capture tools to generate a point cloud of the actual machine instead of developing a 3D solid model from hundreds of time-consuming manual measurements. Now let's talk about these pictures. The process starts off by taking many pictures of the machine from all directions and angles. It is important to include the entire machine in every picture and to take pictures from high and low angles. Every machine will be different, but in general it will require about 60 pictures to produce a decent point cloud. Some machines will require more, some less. There are several other criteria to keep in mind when photographing the machine. As we stated before, you want to take pictures from all angles. Take pictures every 5 to 10 degrees as you circle the machine. Use a ladder to obtain images from a higher position as you circle the machine again. You want to avoid reflections and glare. Reflective surfaces are very difficult to stitch in the final scan. You want to assure a good color contrast between the machine and your background. The machine should contrast with the surrounding background whenever possible. You want to make sure you use a consistent light source. The light source should remain constant and in a single position. Simply put, this means no flashes. And you want to try to use textured surfaces. Textured surfaces are much easier to stitch in the final scan. Now it's time to use Recap Photo. Taking the pictures is the hard part. Once you have the pictures, generating the point cloud is very easy. You simply log into your Autodesk 360 account at 360.autodesk.com and select the Recap Photo option from your 360 benefits. Then proceed to start a new project and upload the pictures. You'll be notified via email when the scan is complete. When your scan is finished, you download it in various mesh and point cloud formats. For this example, we'll download the RCS file or the Recap Scan and we'll open it with Autodesk Recap. Autodesk Recap is the tool we use to interact with the point cloud scan. Recap allows us to clean up the scan easily, removing all unnecessary points from the point cloud. In this example, points that represent the floor were removed from the cloud. Autodesk Recap also allows us to adjust the orientation of the cloud so that the X, Y, and Z axis of the cloud are aligned to the machine and not arbitrarily set by the scan file. Now it's time to bring the point cloud into Autodesk Inventor and the factory design suite. There are many methods of utilizing the point cloud in your design software. In this scenario, we'll be using the point cloud to represent a factory asset. As we stated before, generating a 3D model of the machine will require many manual measurements and several hours of modeling time. Using the point cloud as the asset will save us quite a bit of time and will function just as well as the 3D model, representing the machine and the space required for the asset. The asset creation process starts by inserting the point cloud into an inventor part. The orientation of the cloud set in Autodesk Recap will be utilized when the cloud is inserted into inventor. The original point cloud was generated in meters and needs to be scaled to the proper size. Inventor allows you to reorient the point cloud 
and apply the proper scale factor to the points. A single measurement of the actual machine is needed to determine the proper scale factor. Now we want to prepare to publish the asset. To fully utilize the cloud as a factory asset, you need to add a 2D sketch showing the top view of the machine. The sketch is placed at the bottom of the cloud where the machine would sit on the floor. The 2D sketch contains a simple trace of the major design features of the machine's top view. From this point on, we'll use the standard asset publishing process with a few exceptions. The work plane containing the sketch will act as the landing surface, and points on the sketch will be utilized as insertion points. When we publish the asset, we'll make sure to select Publish Sketch as the 2D representation in the Asset Publishing dialog. Publishing the sketch is important for a couple of reasons. The sketch is utilized to represent the point cloud asset in 2D environments like AutoCAD or Inventor drawing views. The sketch also provides a selection and gripping point, allowing you to easily move and manipulate the cloud asset in factory layout assemblies. Now that you understand the point cloud asset method, you can begin to utilize existing machinery as assets in your next factory layout. It is important to note that this method is not perfect and that there are a couple of pitfalls you need to be aware of. There are no physical properties for point clouds. Point clouds do not supply physical properties like volume and mass. There is an issue with Navisworks translation. At the time of this article, point clouds do not translate directly from Inventor to Navisworks. The original clouds must be appended to the Navisworks scene separately. And low accuracy. Point clouds developed from photos will not have a high degree of dimensional accuracy. These clouds are just rough representations of the actual machine components. I hope you find the contents of this tech tip useful the next time you need to include an existing machine in your factory layout. If you have questions about the contents of this video, please feel free to contact your Imaginate Technologies account manager or your support representative.